All right, and we're live in three, two, one. What's up, pussies? We're back. Football is here. And we got both Dave Smith and 2021 champion. I'd rather stab myself in the eyes than admit that, but Danny Vera, champion. How are you, buddy? Hey, Hola, you know, como estas? Could have been My fun. new name is Pedro fun. Brunton, and <laughs> I approve this message. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully uh, we're not wasting our time with this because we're recording this on uh, Microsoft Teams. So we'll give this a go. But, yeah, hey, um, saw the text messages flying around today and, you know, busy summer and everything, and we kind of changed the, the calendar a little bit this year. Um, so things got pushed back a little bit. But, yeah, we thought we'd do a little, you know, preseason primer get the uh, tree juices flowing um one thing i realized i forgot to pull up was the uh the actual calendar but i think i have it um down here so i can read it off uh but also have a new uh team member so i want to uh our new uh owner i should say um mike regan taking over for maddie g uh two-time champion uh so uh, Regan, uh, probably a lot of people know him from the Pinehurst trip, um, but Dave and I and Mike, we played in a league with him uh, that basically kind of came apart when COVID started. So we were wanting to get, uh, you know, Regs back into the fold. So, um, so we did it. Um, so, yeah, what do you guys, what do you boys have to say? Any uh, words of uh, encouragement or um, support before we uh, kick things off here? Well, for Regan, if he follows the calendar, last time I won, Matty G won twice in a row. So it's a good omen. I'm just, you that's know, true. he's picking up a team that's that's won twice. So, you know, he'll win twice, then I'll win again. So it's a great <laughs> circle. It's a circle of life, I like to call it. <laughs> I think I think we're going to break the wheel this year, personally. But uh, no offense to Regan or Danny, but um, we need some new blood. We need to we need to see a, a new winner. It's been a long time since uh, since we've had somebody not named Danny, Maddie G, or Glenn win this thing. So you know, let's let's see what happens. <laughs> yep. All right. So let me uh, share the screen here, boys, and we're going to do. Um, kind of like a, a quick, hopefully five minutes, uh, rundown here of kind of like the keeper rules, um, you know, and kind of the, the preseason trade window. Cause I, I think it's pretty important now to, uh, kind of set your team up. Um, so we'll cover that real quick. I want to make sure everyone's clear on that. Um, and basically we have about another two weeks before, you know, you have to declare your keepers. So Boys, feel free to, to hop in here anytime that you'd like. Uh, but basically, you know, just for a refresher for everyone, um, you have to keep two offensive players so you can keep anyone on, on your squad. If you need to know. Not um, of the same position. Yep, not of the same position. And if you go to the, the main page of the, the, um, the, the website for the league, you can see uh, Dave has this nice little chart here. Um, so basically what this means, you know, you can only keep someone for, you know, the year that you draft them plus two more years, or you can, the you get them for the year that you drafted them for three more years if they're a rookie. So like uh, Big Poppy had uh, Jamar Chase last year, so he can keep him for, for three more years instead of just the standard two. And then we just keep track of, you know, who is about to fall off um, and can't be kept anymore. So we uh, I like all these changes that, that we've made through the years, kind of uh, keeping things fresh. But you can see, you know, Andrew Jones, Evans, Eckler, Zeke, uh, Saquon, they're all going back into the pool. So it's actually it's Aaron Jones. Andrew Jones was an outfielder for the Braves like 15 yeah, years ago. Yeah, he was ago. pretty good, huh? Yeah, he was an all-star. Center I think he's got a yeah. kid. Yeah. Big <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's when it gets real problem. depressing. Yeah, when you see the the players you watched as a kid, their their kids are now in the league. Yeah, like Vlad Guerrero Jr. just mashing bombs everywhere, and it's like yeah. I remember when his dad was a thing. <laughs> yeah. It just means we're getting fucking old. That's yeah. <laughs> yes. exactly what it means. 
Can confirm, Daniel. Can confirm. <laughs> Thank you, All right, so two keepers, different positions. Um, now we have a third keeper this year uh, for defensive players. So, you know, if if people haven't done IDP, you know, I, I think everyone picked it up pretty quick last year. Um, you know, it's, it's not too difficult to grasp, you know, just kind of if you have questions on it, you know, ask, ask one of us. But, you know, I'm just using a, a different list off of, you know, the, the website that I buy. So, um, but you do need to keep a defensive player, too. So you definitely have three keepers. And then you do have the potential for a bonus keeper. So I saw some some text flying around out there. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit complicated, you know, just because we had, had to kind of make it make a few changes when we added defensive players because the draft is now longer. Um, but basically, so if you if you draft someone and you keep them on your roster the, for the whole year, um, if you've drafted them in round uh, seven or later, I believe, you can bonus keep that person for the pick that you got them on minus three rounds. So if you drafted someone in the seventh round, you could keep that player for basically giving up your fourth round pick uh, in the draft. Um, so if you got if you made a, an awesome draft pick at the end of last year, I think it was round 17 maybe. Um, if you get a great player in round 17 and you want a bonus, keep that person, you can. But 17 minus three is 14. Um, but 14 is is too high. I believe the the max. Uh, or the best you can do is a 12th rounder. No, it's a so, ninth rounder. It's a ninth, ninth rounder, yeah. Ninth. I thought the ninth rounder is for the, the person that you pick up off the street. Uh, I don't know. We might have to... Uh, it's in the it's in the league rules. Hold on. Yeah. Please consult the league rules. Yeah. You go to so, reports, league rules. The, the, the league rules that I had <laughs> said the 12th rounder, so we'll, we'll double check on that. Please scroll up to the top and bring it up. You can bring it up real live on the page so everybody knows where to look right. so go to Earth's league and then uh no right i'm um, sorry reports the rules, reports and then rules rules and league settings and then scroll down to the bottom and this is all the text rules that are in there so the bonus keeper rule uh to account for expanded rounds of the draft, free agent bonus keepers will count as ninth round picks in their first year. Um, uh, yeah, we don't differentiate for a drafted player, I guess. So, <laughs> live I mean, updates but, here. We'll be updating that because I had that written down somewhere else. I, I looked it up today. So, it's just a little differentiator for if you draft someone versus picking them up off off the street after the fact so if you pick up anyone i believe it's before like a week six cutoff is that right dave six or seven yeah it does um, have six, yeah, it's six. Down on the rules so you can scroll down and see <laughs> why don't you just look where i wrote it down yeah uh players picked up as free agents before the kickoff of week six yes it's uh it's the bonus keeper rule uh, number th uh, number three. Yep. Yeah. So so yeah so um, I believe Tony sent something today uh, offering someone that people didn't like, uh, and, and he <laughs> indicated that you could bonus keep that person for a ninth rounder. Uh, he probably I would assume picked that um, it was that Bears uh, wide receiver or the Falcons. Running back slash wide receiver guy. Oh, for Daryl Patterson. Yeah. So, you know, the grumpy people on the text thread didn't like it, but you know, he he's a decent, a, a good value to bonus keep for a ninth round pick. So uh, maybe or Mike Williams. <laughs> yeah. So, um, there's actually a lot of I think a lot of guys are going to have really good bonus keepers because there were some guys that came in off of the top rope last year. Like I was looking at a few rosters. So, um, you know, and um, it's pretty easy to go back and find out where you drafted somebody. You just go to the 2021 page and then click draft and then you can bring up the um, 
the last year's draft. It's it's real simple. You just click draft right there, Derek, right at the so top. You always want to make sure you're on the right league. So I opened up the, the 2021 league, and then yeah. you just go to league. No, you don't even have to go to league. You just click the draft, draft button across the top. Or draft results there is fine, too. But you just hit the draft button right there on the – yeah. And then you can select yeah. your franchise. So if you want to look at, you know, Mike Smith's franchise, uh, Daryl Leaked, or me. Hey, look at me. The one I randomly picked. And there you go. This draft. And you can see down there oh. that I picked Mike Williams in the 11th Ooh. round. That's a good pick, though. It was. It worked out just fine. And it's a one. It's a great. It, that's what the bonus keeper is about, right there. So do I have any? So uh, James Conner looks good. He'll probably be my bonus keeper. Yeah. Uh, tenth. Sure. So I'll get to keep him for a seventh. Yeah. So anyway, that's how it works. If you have any questions about it, just check with me or Derek or whoever. But you know, it's relatively straightforward once you start looking at it. So, um, what was the next thing, D? As far as well, we didn't have any kind of rule or scoring changes so no that's there's not really anything to talk about there right it was nope. just the the um the shit the defensive keeper no not the defensive keeper the new um gosh the new standings the new i don't, oh, I don't know divisions. there was one sorry yeah Oh, the new divisions? Divisions, yeah. Did we talk about that? <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, but we, we can. Yeah. So, a uh, new division. Well, you know, let, let's come back to the divisions. Let's just wrap up, you know, kind of the preseason trading sure, and sorry. strategy and things like that. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, just for – because, I mean, the rules aren't super intuitive, you know. We've just – Dave and I specifically have been talking about them for so long. We can – Usually rattle, rattle them off, but, you know, especially for Regan is just coming in. Probably, you know, there's a lot to take in. <laughs> so so two offensive keepers can't be the same position. One defensive player, uh, one bonus keeper. The preseason trading rules came into effect because, um, you know, it gives us an extra two weeks on our fantasy football season. But it also gives the the – the the teams that don't have good keepers at, le at least a chance to try to find something. Um, so like Joe Yi, I looked at his roster. Um, he's in good shape this year, actually. He's in real good shape, but I'm not so sure on his defensive keeper. Um, yeah. Maybe. Nothing is jumping off of the the screen at me. So Joe might want to reach out to to a team who has, you know, more than one good defensive player. And there's probably a lot of those franchises. Those franchises obviously can't keep both of the defensive players. So um, that's kind of the, the what we're thinking for that rule change. So the person who has two good defensive players can get a, you know, a lower level draft pick and Joe can have a good, you know, defensive player on his team. Yeah. Um, so like one Dave thing, said, I don't see. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, no, one thing that can help to give a little context on that, too, and you can see how stuff worked out, is I think we had four, either four uh, trades last year before keepers were declared. And um, you can go back and kind of look at those for an idea of trades that were made, values, that how how stuff worked out. You know, all those kind of things. So um, it's kind of interesting to look at it. You can see right there, there was, um, you know, Mike Smith gave up J.K. Dobbins to Tony for Mike Evans. One other thing when you're evaluating trade values again is go back and look at that keeper log because you might be able to make a deal for a top level player that you won't be able to keep next year. Or on the other side, you might be able to trade a top-level player that has no more keeper in him for uh, somebody else that's younger or has more keeper or whatever. So these trades last year, um, that's pretty much what a lot of them were, you know. And um, yeah. one of the big ones was Dave Free trading with Derek, giving up Barkley for Darrell Henderson and Waller. Dave kept both those players. Derek kept Saquon. Saquon's out of keeper years, though, so that's kind of the balance of that trade. Yeah, 
And I think Henderson was a bonus keeper. One of them was. I can't remember yeah. who. Yeah. So, yeah, so, like, you know, I think this this trade with me and Joe Yee, basically a fourth rounder for Keenan Allen. Yeah. Like I couldn't keep Keenan Allen. Joe, So I get a fourth rounder. Joe gets, you know, a much better keeper. I don't know who his other choices were, but I assume they weren't good. Um, yeah, I think. I think Joe was in rough shape last year. Yeah. And Danny and picked up Andre Swift from Mike Smith for a fourth rounder. So, you know, I mean. I mean, Swift came yeah. in the clutch. Freaking yeah, one in the league right there. That's a league yeah. winner. Danny Vera coming from last to first, making big moves. Ricky making, Bobby, baby. Making moves. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think that the pre – the the pre-draft trading is uh, is a good way to kind of strengthen up the the bottom half of your keeper roster. Nobody's in bad shape as far as keepers go. Which the first couple of years we did this, we had a couple of teams that were in like real bad shape. Um, so they kind of got raked over the coals a little bit. But um, yeah, I think people can make small moves, incremental draft improvements for teams with stronger rosters and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you know, see what you can do. Yeah. So, like, I'm just looking at my roster. Like, T. Higgins would be a guy that I could target to try to send somewhere. You know, he's just hey, top hey, hey, player. hey, 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 this is not a sales forum. You fucker. I'm just trying to give people examples. We can look at yours. Yeah. How about um, oh, your has... team fucking blows. Oh, I forgot. You have no tradable assets. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm picking 10th. Where are you picking, you cocksucker? <laughs> George, Kitt- uh, George, George Kittle. Kittle. Well, you already sent this out, but yeah, no one wants that guy. But well, yeah, the other guy, know, you- I mean, I guess if you want to like talk about weird values, right? Elijah Mitchell, I picked him up as a free agent. So you could trade me for Elijah Mitchell, who's the starter in San Francisco, I guess. I mean, he's a risky dude. That's why I'm not keeping him. But like, if you don't have a bonus keeper, you can keep him as a ninth. And I mean... Whoever runs the ball in San Fran's going to be good. I just don't know if it's going to be him. So I'm going yeah, to. It's probably going to be Debo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to be a running back by committee. That's why. Yeah. yeah. That well, that, that, that's a great back. example, though. That really right. is. Mm-hmm. All right. So anyway. So that should that should cover it. You know, we just wanted to kind of introduce that. So let's run through the new divisions real quick, and then we should talk about the. Uh, the Cinderella tale that was the big poppy 2021 season. Yeah, um, so those divisions. Yep. So I picked these. Actually, one of my kids did it. It's on video somewhere. If you really think I'm trying to cheat you with the divisions. But once um, you see the divisions, you'll see that clearly he wasn't cheating because <laughs> I think your division's kind of kind of tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All so right. So. Latina yeah. Fire, Chuggers, Dave, Floppy D, <laughs> and uh, Tony Z. He's going to need to update his little Baker Mayfield gif. Mm-hmm. Hey, Division oh, 2, always a Panda, Bobby G, the Bearded Clam, and Big Poppy. Our defending champ, Big Poppy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this looks uh, doesn't look too uh, too good down here. Yeah, the Liptard, Glenn, he's always he's always in the mix. You know, Glenn, I, for I worked hard on that email. I assume some people didn't read it, but since we've moved to this site in 2010, Glenn's franchise has the highest winning franchise in the league. Now, Glenn, I forgot. I couldn't really tell when Glenn took over. I think it was 2012. <laughs> It was either 2012 or 2013, but um, Glenn, for all the shit we give him, is usually, it has always been in the mix. Yep. All right. Anyway. Well, Dave, do you need the the uh, site while you... Uh, I'm going to go through real tail? quick, just the, just the dates real quick. Okay. Uh, just because it, for guys that are in both leagues, it can get a little confusing. So the, the pre... The, the pre-keeper trading window is open until keepers are declared. That's on August 29th, which I believe is a Monday. Um, and that's after all the preseason games have concluded. So we're going to get through all the injuries and all the bullshit before anybody has to declare their keepers. Um, and it also gives us a chance to watch the preseason games. If it changes how you feel about somebody, then you can make a strong move for them if you want. Um, 
The draft currently scheduled, well, it's going to be September 5th. We have it at 8.30 to start. That'll be flexible as we need to do, but, you know, just kind of plan on the night of September 5th is going to be uh, taken up by the draft. Um, Waivers are going to run once before um, the season starts. So waivers are going to be every Thursday, 10 a.m. We'll run waivers once and then uh, September 8th. Um, four weeks and one day from right now, it begins kickoff where Derek's bills of Buffalo travel to Los Angeles to take on the, uh, the Ray, no, not the Raiders, the, uh, the Raiders, (laughs) the fucking, (laughs) so anyway, should be exciting, but yeah, that's the thing is we got a long time until keeper declarations come in. So, yeah. So we got over two weeks. So, so yeah, you know, I would probably I would probably at least get through this weekend before I would start making trades. You know, you don't want to trade someone and then see them get get hurt later. But uh, you can certainly, you know, start getting the the structures together for sure. So. All right. Do we want to fucking gas up Danny Vera for a few minutes? I think we should. All right. So a great Dan- idea. I did a little bit of digging here. I had some time this evening. My kids were in bed early, so I did a little uh, little research here, a little research project. So Danny was dead last, picked first in 2020. And, uh, you know, he ended up winning the whole damn thing, uh, finished real strong. So, you know, what's interesting when I was looking at Danny is through the first eight weeks last year, Danny was four and four. He was third in his own division. He was seventh in scoring. He was ninth on the site power rank and his all play record. So that's his, you know, all play for those eight weeks was 45 and 43. So, you know, two games over 500. So like he was a average middle of the road team, right? Not bad, not good. Last year we had a lot of parody, you know, for you guys that remember, like pretty much everybody was in it until the last two weeks. So it was, it was a wild finish. But anyway, so Danny goes on this epic tear. So his regular season, he finished off nine and five. So the last six weeks of the season, Danny goes five and one. Real special. You might say, how'd that happen? Right? I don't know. So he goes from seventh in scoring to third in scoring uh, over that time. Uh, he finished second in the league in scoring, but he was the third highest scoring franchise over that six week time period, he was averaging 164 points a week. Um, the only two teams that were better with him, um, are us (laughs) and Derek was mopping the still fucking lost. Big cat was over that six, six week period. Derek averaged 184 points and I averaged 168 points. So, um, you know, Danny really flipped it. Um, you know, his, his first six weeks, you know, he was averaging like 150 something points. So anyway, uh, he went from the uh, seventh or ninth in the site power rank to third in the site power rank. And his all play record went to um, 20 games over 500. So for that six weeks period, he was uh, winning at 63 percent of his games. So he went 42 and 24 those last six um, weeks. So um, he uh, came out with some crazy wins. You know, week nine, he beat. Uh, Glenn, who we beat in the Super Bowl, uh, ugly game, but he beat him 130-120. Week 10, he beat me 187-179. to Fuck. Um, he beat uh, Seymour Bush 170-152 in week 11. Week 12, he beat Andrew, the Bearded Clam, 160-136. to Week 13, he lost to Floppy D. Um, <laughs> only came up with 130 points that week. Bobby scored 166. And then uh, week 14, when he had to win – to get the buy, he put up a uh, a league high 204 points, smoking Tony, uh, 204 to 152. So Danny was five and one those last six weeks to get the the number one overall seed, to get that first week buy, and then uh, his playoffs were just a he steamrolled the two teams. Week 16 he played Joe Yee, beats him 198 to 112, and the Ooh. Super Bowl he beat Glenn 196 to 121. So you know like you know just like a he closed like a freight train and uh i was like how'd that happen right how do you go from like the worst team in the league to a 500 team for the first eight weeks of the season 
to basically, you know, I mean, he finished the season seven and one. Uh, um, so his two keepers last year were Tyreek and DeAndre Swift, which he traded uh, his fourth round pick uh, to Mike Smith for DeAndre Swift, um, who Swift was good, but he was banged up last year as always. But, you know, always a contributor. That fourth round pick incidentally became uh, Miko Hardman for Mike Smith. <laughs> didn't work out <laughs> i actually looked at the players around me cole hardman nobody was very good so it's not like like it's not like it was a bad pick it was just like it was a dead zone of the trade so and he kept josh allen as his bonus uh keeper for the fifth round um can't keep josh allen as a bonus keeper this year dan okay, um sure. you know danny's draft was interesting too he picked 101 picks christian mccaffrey overcame that to win it all just so we know um the the real uh, where he won it. There's three picks that I identified that won it for you. Uh, pick 207, which he got in a trade from Derek. This nice might hurt. Pick, huh? That became Jamar Chase. Heard of him? <laughs> yeah. Glenn did. Uh, <laughs> I love yeah. the group chat because of it. <laughs> so, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave's fucking in that. I'm going to make that my background. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best possible way to end this. <laughs> I hope his face just stays frozen there for all time. <laughs> I'm going to make that my background, like on my work meetings. Now I gotta know who uh, who the last guy was. Oh, he's completely gone now. <laughs> All right. Well. Oh, there he, he's back. Oh, he's, oh, he's back. back. He's back. <laughs> Damn. All right, we got. This is probably the best podcast of all time. You were just frozen there for like five minutes. It was oh, the greatest. Seriously? I'll send you the picture. <laughs> oh, all right, let's let's wrap it up here. Anyway. So who are, who are the three players that that uh, that won it? Oh, Jamar Chase, seven, which he traded and got from you. Uh, uh, so that's not great. Um, Damian Harris picked two twelve. That was his own good con- contributor. And then the real the real cream of the crop here was uh, his eleventh round pick. Are you guys there still? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I can't see you. I can only see myself. That's okay. So that's, we can see you, baby okay. boy. Uh, in the 11th round, there Danny picked Devin Singletary, who kind of bumped around all through the season. Yeah. But when it counted in Week 16, first round of the playoffs, guy scored 16.3 points as an 11th rounder. Um, and in Week 17, the Super Bowl, uh, he scored 26 points. He had 23 carries for 110 yards and two touchdowns as an 11th round pick. So, um, pretty. Pretty impressive. One other thing that Danny did last year that that pushed him over the line was he made a trade in week 11 with Bobby D for Mark Andrews. Um, He gave up Robbie Anderson and his second round pick in 2022 for Mark Andrews and uh, and around six. Um, Mark Andrews averaged 26.7 points a week when Danny picked him up. And in the playoff weeks, uh, Andrews scored 29.5 points in week 16 and 15, 14.9 points in the Super Bowl. So, you know, that trade right there, um, when you compare, when you bring that in with Jamar Chase being a monster and Devin Singletary being huge in the playoffs, that's that's how we did it. There you go. I mean, that's a perfect recap. I, <laughs> I have nothing else to say. I will say, you know, it's funny. That you said parody. There was a bunch of parody last year um, uh-huh. that when I – when I made that trade with Bobby, I was like, I have a chance. I still have a chance to win this, win the division. I didn't think I was going to get the first round by, but I thought I could, you know, I could I could be real competitive. And I got ridiculed by Glenn Schillinger, like always, for trading my second round yeah. pick um, to, to Bob for Mark Andrews. And I think, and I didn't look back at the numbers, he might be the top uh, tight end in points in our league last year. So he was. it was either him or yeah. Kittle. No, I'm not Kittle or Kelsey. No, um, it, was, it was Mark Andrews by a wide margin. He yeah. he, he beat uh, Kelsey by I don't know 25 or 30 points. And that's him not having Lamar. Also, he was he was had Todd Hundley. So yeah. um, you know it was 
it was it was fun. It was a good ride. I mean, I, McCaffrey fucked me, but at the end of the day, he was a non. It was a non-issue. So you know, I I, I mean, if the McCaff if McCaffrey, you know, if he wasn't injured, one in the dynasty, I would have done a lot better. But in this <laughs> league, if you had McCaffrey all season and he would have been what we expect, like, I mean, we probably would be looking at a. 11 win season for you 11 yeah. 12 wins like you would have run away with the league if you would have had a 25 point a week running back on that team too so but then you probably wouldn't have made the andrews trade no uh, probably not i mean but i probably that. wouldn't would have needed it and i'll tell you the one last thing is uh micah parsons was a huge pickup uh joe Yi, i think dropped him mm-hmm. i don't know why he dropped him but he dropped him thank you joe Yi, my favorite asian uh, no joe Yi doesn't have a defensive keeper so he <laughs> drops him, him and I think he dropped him for a buy. I got to, if you look back, you'll see it. And he needed to clear up some roster space for it to, to have a, a buy week covered. And I picked him up and it turned out to be, you know, fool's gold. Cause that guy's just a, he's a monster. I mean, I could, but now he's a rookie bonus keep as well for defensive. I keep him for, uh, as long as he doesn't get hurt, I keep him for three more years. I suppose you're right about that. Uh, Interesting point. Now you I've never even him. thought about that. Uh, the rookie, the rookie keeper, you have to have drafted him. I'll, I'll, I'll call Mike Smith. We'll be on the phone in about ten minutes. Yeah, call have league counsel <laughs> contact us. So, but we'll, it was. Uh, a, we'll have Derek uh, select a mediator uh, that he can influence. Steve. <laughs> Derek will have Ella mediate the whole yeah, thing. I'll, us. I'll call up Sue Al Robinson, <laughs> and she can issue a, a ruling. And then I will ignore it and do whatever I want. <laughs> Pretty hey, but I I kept the Sean Watson on my roster the whole the whole year. Yeah. And that didn't affect me either. <laughs> yeah. It's not working out the way I thought it would. <laughs> we uh, won't be seeing him this year. Yeah. So but I look forward to trying to defend. Um and I welcome Mike Regan to the uh to the league. Great job running it, you two. You guys do all right. No one gives you enough credit. So the Thanks, big guy's giving you a little bit of credit. <laughs> Thanks. A little dude. cheers for the commissioners. Appreciate it. Got a fresh DC right here. Oh, you can't even see it. It's invisible. Oh. All, right. All right, boys. Well, good stuff here. So, yeah, start looking at those rosters. We've got about uh, a little more than two weeks to, you know, sort out your keepers. Make sure you got a, a good uh, keeper roster. Danny Vera is living proof that it's important. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you boys soon. Holler. Peace out, people. Uh,